Hey everybody, Ryan here at E-Trailer. Today on our 2022 Jeep Wrangler 4xE, we're gonna be showing you how to install the Demco Stay in Play Supplemental Braking System with the wireless coach link monitor. But before we do that, why don't we check it out and make sure that the system is gonna work for you. Before we get too carried away talking about the braking system, why don't we kind of just cover some of the basics and refresh ourselves on the main parts that we're gonna to need to flat tow our Jeep down the road in the first place. There's gonna be a total of five main parts. The first one's gonna be the base plate, and that's gonna provide us with a solid and reliable attachment point. That way we can hook our tow bar up to it. Tow bar is gonna be the second component, and this is gonna be the physical link that actually connects the front of your vehicle to the back of the motorhome. Third main component will be safety cables, and these are just there in the event of an unlikely disconnect. We're gonna keep everything paired together. The fourth main part will be tow bar wiring, and this is gonna transfer the lighting functions from the back of your coach to the back of your Jeep, uh, keeping you safe and legal, you know, people around you know what's going on. And last but not least, the fifth main component will be a supplemental braking system. And what this is gonna do is apply the brakes in your Jeep whenever you hit the brakes in your RV, uh, helping to bring you to a more complete and predictable stop. With that out of the way though, let's talk about braking system. So before we you know, really dive into the details with this particular one, uh, I wanna talk about some of the others. That way you can even determine uh, if this kit will work for you before you go any further. So when it comes to the Jeep, there's three big ones that we've had really good luck with. The stay and play like we have here today, the uh, Air Force One, as well as the Patriot Three. And those are all gonna be used in a little bit different scenario. So with the stay and play, um, this is gonna be for those of you that want a permanent type system that'll stay on the Jeep. And you're gonna use that if your motorhome has kind of your classic hydraulic brakes. If your motorhome has air brakes <clears throat> and you want a permanent type system, that's where the Air Force One uh, will come into play. And then you have the Patriot 3, which is in a sense a portable type system. Those are gonna work uh, with your Jeep regardless if your motor home is air brakes or hydraulic brakes. Uh, the thing with that is though, um, you know, you're gonna have to set it up and take it out every time you wanna use it. Not really a huge deal because it just drops in uh, for the most part, but that's always an option for you if you don't really flat tow that often or if you got a couple of cars you like to flat tow or kind of constantly upgrade your car, your motor home, uh, that would be uh, definitely one worth looking into. Whenever it comes to setting up a flat tow, you want something that's gonna be really easy to figure out and don't take up a lot of your time, right? And once the system's installed, it doesn't get uh, much simpler. There's gonna be a box over here on your driver's side kick panel, and whenever you're ready to activate the system, all you're gonna to have to do is reach back there and flip the switch into the on position. One of the benefits to this system is the fact that it is proportional. So more or less what that means is the braking pressure in the Jeep is gonna match the braking pressure that you apply here inside your motor home. And so essentially what that's going to do is slow everything down as one whole unit. And it's going to be much more smooth and predictable and so on. Um, just kind of give you an example that, let's say, you know, if we're going down the road and we see a stoplight up ahead and, you know, you get one third halfway down on the brake pedal, the Jeep is gonna do the same thing. Uh, on the other hand, let's say, you know, if you're going down the highway and maybe a big accident up ahead, something like that, and you gotta really stand on the brake and slow things down quick, the Jeep is gonna do the same thing. So that's gonna eliminate, you know, you feel like the Jeep is kind of dragging you back or, you know, if the Jeep's brakes aren't working hard enough and you're relying more on the motorhome to, to do all the braking. It's going to solve those issues and like I said, slow everything down as one whole unit. While we're inside here, we might as well talk about the wireless coach link portion. So that's what this is. It's a monitor that plugs into your cigarette lighter and this is going to let you know if your braking system is operating or not. So for example, I'll hit the brake 
and if the operating unit turns on at the back or in our Jeep, we'll get those lights to come on. All right, and then there's also a buzzer. So if the brakes are applied for a certain period of time, you can hear it to start beep, and that'll let you know, um, you know, if you're having a malfunction, if the brake pedal's stuck, or anything along those lines. Um, when you're not expecting it to. Obviously, if you're sitting here holding the brake, you know it's gonna turn on eventually. And uh, But if you're going down the highway or something and that starts buzzing, well, you should probably check it out. Um, if the buzzer, if you know you're gonna be on the brake a lot, let's say if you're in stop and go traffic or something like that, you can always just turn it off, flip that off, and that way you don't have to listen to it beep at you even though you know, you know everything's good. So. A uh, good way to kind of keep an eye on things from inside of the cab and give you a little more peace of mind whenever you're flat towing your Jeep down the road. The system's also going to come with a safety device, which is this here. It's known as a breakaway switch. And there's a tether that just runs from it to your motorhome's hitch. And in the event of an unlikely disconnect, what will happen is this pin will get pulled. And when it gets pulled, the braking system activates and helps kind of get things slowed down and back under control. Other than that though, I mean, at the end of the day, this is a really reliable braking system. We do a ton of them here. I personally uh, put them on Jeeps that are 20 years old and ones that are brand new. Even uh, our hybrid model here today, it works. You know, that everything fits good, it's hidden, you know, the install's clean and everything else. So uh, it's one to definitely, definitely think about if you're looking for a permanent type system and your motorhome has the hydraulic brakes. Uh, as far as getting it installed goes, like I said, on the Jeep, it's really not too bad. It's a lot of wiring and stuff, so set a, a, a good day aside probably, you know, a Saturday to, to get everything in and, and set up. Uh, but, you know, once you do it, you're done. You know, it's a one-time deal. So uh, as long as you stay focused, shouldn't run into too many issues. But speaking of that, why don't we go ahead, pull into the garage, and put it on together now. To begin our braking system install, first thing that I like to do is mount up our operating unit here. That way I can get our bumper back on and kind of start to wrap up some of the other things from our base plate and whatnot. Uh, and what I like to do is take the operating unit and mount it behind our actual bumper. So it works out pretty good. Um, I like to mount this up to where all of our cords and stuff are facing the driver's side. It just kind of flows a little bit better and there's these flanges on your operating unit and they line up pretty well with the edges of the bumper beam. And so you can hold that, mark where the holes are and then kind of start to pre-drill if you want to and then come back with some self-tapping screws and simply run that in. And this thing is super solid. Uh, it's not gonna go anywhere. And once we have this on, then we can actually get the bumper back on our vehicle and kind of start to, to uh, build off of that. So. Uh, I figured before we had the bumper on, probably get a better idea of what's going on with the uh, operating unit um, position like this. So I went ahead and got our bumper back on our Jeep and uh, kind of just figured why not check it out and see what we got going on back here now. So here's what it looks like. As you can see, everything will clear. Even if you have the sway bar disconnect motor assembly like we do, still have plenty of space to work. So now we can start to get everything hooked up and routed and whatnot. So with our Jeep being the hybrid, it has full uh, electric assist brakes. And so we don't need to worry about actually teeing our vacuum line in. But what you wanna do is take a piece of the hose they give you, cut maybe a couple inches of it off, push the hose on to the check valve there that's already pre-installed, and then take your other check valve and put the white end into the line towards the operating unit. So you want it to be like that and then that's all we need to do from there. We don't need to hook this up to anything else or anything along those lines. And then what you wanna do, which we'll show how this gets routed up in a minute, but you can take your nylon air tube and route this down from the top of the engine compartment down to here. And when this is down here, you can then tape these wires that come out of the operating unit to it, to the tube and also tape your breakaway switch wires suit as well. And then you can pull this nylon tube up and that'll feed all the wires up into the engine compartment. Makes it a little bit easier. But 
once those are all pulled up there, you can actually hook up our nylon air tube. And really what you need to watch out for with this is to make sure that the end has a good clean straight cut. So you can use a tool like this or a tubing cutter or even a, just a razor edge, uh, cut it straight. You wanna avoid using regular pair of snips because then it'll pinch and potentially create a leak. So I'll go ahead and cut that. Looks really good. And then on this side of the unit, just above this, there's a quick fitting that this will just plug right into. So there's that fitting. And with these, it's just a push to connect. So you just take that, push it in, you'll feel it kind of snap into place. And that's uh, really all there is to it there. So now inside of the vehicle, we can get a couple other things mounted up. That way we can kind of get all of our wiring uh, done at once. So on the driver's side here, in this area, along the kick panel, we're gonna mount up what's called our G-Force controller. And then along this bottom edge, um, we're gonna mount up our wireless transmitter. So just wanted to give you a reference point on where we're gonna be working, because obviously under the dash, things are a little tight and a little more difficult to see. So first things first, this is our G-Force controller. And like I said, it's on the mounted up to the kick panel. I just use the provided screws to secure it. And whenever you're doing this, you want it to be as straight as possible. So, you know, you want the knob to face the direction of travel. So this part, you always want it to face towards the front of the car and you want it to be level. You don't want it to be sitting cockeyed or off or anything. So thankfully this kick panel here gets us right where we need to be essentially. And that'll work out real well. There's gonna be a handful of wires that come off the G-Force controller and we'll run those into the firewall in a, in, in a minute. That way we can get them into the engine compartment. But we might as well hook up our wireless coach link so we can run all those wires uh, at the same time. Right here's our coach link. There was a, a panel here under the steering wheel that I just popped off. You can just pull it off and you don't have to do that, but I really just took it off so we could see better. Um, so that's an option if you want to do that. But with this, I simply just zip tied it to the support beam right here. And then you're going to have a duplex type wire that comes off it. Eventually this will break into two smaller wires, but uh, you're going to take that and your G-Force controller wires and pretty much directly above our controller up here, there's a factory grommet that you can use to uh, run your wires out into the engine compartment. Here's a look at the grommet that I talked about. Um, you are gonna have to drill or punch a small hole through it to get all the wires and whatnot through there. Um, and this is only gonna hold true for the automatic transmission Jeeps. The standard transmissions, uh, they actually use this to run some of their clutch cables and whatnot through there, but chances are pretty good. Uh, this day and age, everything will be automatic. So this is the uh, route that you can uh, run your wires through. Here under the hood, this is where our wires come out of this corner that we ran through the grommet. And the wires from our operating unit and our breakaway switch came right up through here. So like I talked about, I dropped our nylon tube down, taped the wires to it and pulled them right up. Uh, so we'll kind of we'll run through these one by one. We'll start with the uh, G-Force wires uh, back here. So. I believe there's a total of five G-Force controller wires, green, yellow, red, black, and white. The green and yellow, that's gonna go color for color on our existing diode wiring. So here's our existing diode wiring. Cut the green and yellow one in half, strip back the insulation, crimped on a buck connector. Then strip back the other side twisted the green wire from our G-Force controller to the green diode wire. Same deal with the yellow. And then placed them both into one end of the buck connector, crimped them down. That completed that circuit. The white wire, so this one's a little different here. This is the white wire from our G-Force controller. That's just going to be grounded. And uh, I have one post that I've been using for all my grounds which is back here, and it tucked off in that corner. And with that, I just crimped on a ring terminal, um, slid it over that stud, and obviously tightened the nut back down. And actually while you're doing that, go ahead and take 
the wireless transmitter wiring, that's that duplex wiring, right? And like I said, it breaks off into two. It'll break off, you'll have a, a white wire. That can get grounded as well. So while you have that nut off, ground the transmitter white wire and your G-Force controller white wire down to that stud. Uh, that way you only have to do it one time or take it apart one time. From there, you're going to have a black wire from the G-Force controller and a red wire from the G-Force controller. Those are gonna get connected to the uh, wires from our operating unit. So red wire from the operating unit, right into there, really straightforward. And a black wire from the operating unit goes to the black G-Force controller wire. So nothing too uh, out of the ordinary there. If we start to kind of follow our wires back a little bit more towards the front, we have a couple more connections there. One of them will be the red wire from our wireless transmitter. So this is the other one that breaks off into the red. And that's gonna run back and get connected like this. So that's the red wire from our transmitter. You're gonna take the black wire from your breakaway switch, as well as the blue wire from the operating unit, strip back the ends, pop them into one end of buck connector like that, and hook your red wire up there. And then the other connection is this one. All right, so you're gonna have your brown wire from your operating unit and your orange wire from your breakaway switch and did the same thing, strip back both ends, one end of the buck connector, and then coming out of the buck connector, I took an extra piece of wire that I had laying around, this is maybe five or six foot of it, um, put it into the buck connector, and this is gonna run over towards the battery. All right, so here it is, and ran it along through here. Keep in mind, everything's just kind of loosely installed right now too. Once we verify it works, we'll come back, clean it all up. That's gonna run over to the positive battery where we can hook up our fuse holder and get it connected. Here's where our wire ends, like I said. I need to hook it up to our fuse holder. And so I somewhat prepared this and I'll show you how to make a buck connection. That'll apply to all the connections that we made. But um, fuse holder, one end gets a ring terminal, other end gets a buck connector. And then to make that connection you can strip back into the wire there give it a good twist and then you're going to just place the bare end of the wire into the connector and crimp it down and i am using heat shrink buck connectors the ones that come with the kit will look a little different they just won't have these soft ends on them and i upgraded to these because when you seal these up uh, it just does better against corrosion and things like that. But the ones that come in the kit will work fine. But with them being heat shrink, I'll take my heat gun and seal up the ends. And once these are sealed up, we can then hook it up to our positive battery terminal. So if you look under here, on our battery terminal, there's a handful of different studs we can use. Any of these will work fine. Um, you can always take this nut off and use it as well. But with nothing being on this one, I actually have a nut. I found a nut that'll thread on there and I'll just use that. Uh, I wanna say this was an M8 uh, nut, inch and a quarter pitch. Pretty sure that's what it was, but um, make sure the fuse is not installed when you're doing this. I do that at the very end once everything's hooked up. You slide the ring terminal over, put this on, and come back and tighten it down. So we're pretty much wrapped up for the most part here in the engine compartment with the exception of cleaning everything up, which we'll do obviously once we make sure our system's working. Uh, but we do need to take that nylon air tube. I know we routed it up earlier, kind of never told you where it went. But this is just simply going to go through that same grommet that all of our wires and everything went through. 
uh, into the driver's side floorboard. And from there we can hook up our actuator cylinder and get this plugged into it. Now back inside the vehicle under the dash over here on the driver's side. So our airline tube comes down and gets connected to the cylinder. So the cylinder, what you're gonna do is bolt it to your brake pedal arm and then eventually it'll get bolted up to the firewall as an anchor. And this is what's actually going to activate or push down your brake pedal whenever the system turns on. So with this one, uh, it comes with some, some of these screws already installed. They're just a little short for my liking. They barely pass the uh, brake pedal arm. So I switched them out with the longer ones. The longer ones do come with the kit too. So uh, if that's what you want to do, obviously you can. But we clamp this onto the brake pedal arm. Uh, you know, maybe, you know, three fingers worth up from our brake pedal here because you want it low enough to where it has leverage, but not so low that'll be in your foot's way when you're driving. And so I clamp that on there, and then there's a cable that comes off the back to an anchor that we need to secure to the firewall. So like I said, that cable comes off the back and goes to an anchor, and you want that cable to be straight. That way when the brake pedal gets pushed down, this has a good straight, clean shot. Um, I did take the bracket that comes with it and cut the carpet back a little bit, figured out where I wanted this, and then I screwed the bracket into the firewall. These Jeeps usually are pretty open behind there, but not a bad idea to check in the engine compartment where you're going to drill through. That way you don't screw into something of importance. Once that's in, then you take the anchor, secure it, and then you can adjust the tension on the cable. You want a little bit of slack in it whenever the brake pedal is just in its natural resting state. Um, and to do that on that end, there's a set screw. It's a four millimeter Allen head uh, set screw. You can loosen that up and then, you know, either pull more cable out or tighten the cable up to adjust the tension and then tighten that set screw back down. So once that's all set up how you want it, that leaves you with just having to plug in the airline to the cylinder. The airline works just like the one that we did at the operating unit. You want to, uh, you know, cut it to length and then make sure that cut is straight and clean and simply just plug it right in to the fitting there. Now what we have left to do is just test uh, our system, make sure it's working. So you want to take your fuse and place that into the holder and then go inside of your vehicle. Make sure to turn the G-Force controller switch into the on position. It's a quick way to test it. You can pull this pin and when we do, we should hear our unit kick on and we can look inside and make sure the brake pedal is being pushed down. So we can see our brake pedal are moving and everything seems to be operating as it should. So our Jeep side uh, is now complete. So once the Jeep is completely set up, uh, as far as the wireless coach link monitor goes, super easy. Just come into your motor home, set it up where you want it, and plug it into a 12 volt type outlet like this. That's really all there is to it. You don't have to you know, pair the devices or, or anything along those lines. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Demco Stay in Play Supplemental Braking System with the wireless coach link monitor on our 2022 Jeep Wrangler 4xe.